Hey guys, and welcome into another Buffy reaction. Today we are going to be watching episodes three and four of the second season, which are titled School Hard and Inca Mummy Girl. The first two episodes I thought were good, specifically the very first episode when she was bad. I like that we got to see the after effects of season one on Buffy, and it let us know that the anointed one is still, still kicking it out there. I'm kind of hoping that he's like a first half of this. I want to get rid of him. <laughs> That's what I'm building up to. I want to get rid of the anointed one. We need fresh villains. I want to get introduced to a new villain that's going to arc over season two. I'm hoping that we do um, in these next couple episodes. But for now, we have the anointed one. And then episode two was a little monster of the week episode with these two guys making a little Frankenstein girlfriend for their dead brother or his dead brother. Eric wasn't a part of it. And Eric, can I just say, who was the helper? I was a little bit confused about why Eric didn't get like any conclusion to his character in the episode like he got carried out of where the fire happened um by Giles and Willow I believe maybe Giles yeah I think Giles and Willow and then we never saw him again but he was like the real creep who wanted to kill girls and make this girl zombie girlfriend it seems like we needed to deal with him because I feel like he could cause problems in the future. But if it's going to stick to a Monster of the Week episode, I'm guessing we'll probably just never see him again. If you would like to watch the full episodes with me, my uncut reactions are available on my Patreon. It's a great way to see full reactions, get bonus content, and just support me and the channel. Thank you to my patrons who are over there. You guys are a huge, huge help to me and I'm having a lot of fun with you. If you would rather watch the edited version here on YouTube, let's get into it. She alone will stand against the vampires, the demons, and the forces of darkness. She is the Slayer. So sorry, pausing it already because of that little spiel that they always give us. It is crazy to me that there's one Slayer. Why is that? The universe just decided that that's how it has to be. Who just, who made that rule? How come there's only one? Because that's a lot of work. And plus, there has to be demons and vampires and whatevers all over the world. Like, she can't physically even be there for the entire world to handle all of this stuff that's going on. She can barely keep it. It's like a full-time job just to keep an eye on Sunnydale. So I'm just, I'm convinced that they keep telling us that there's only one Slayer, but I feel like at some point down the line, there's going to be a plot, plot line where there's an another Slayer introduced. Well, I guess there's a difference between the vampire Slayer, like the Slayer, and a demon hunter because we know that those exist too thanks to Sid, that um, dummy from fir the first season. He was like a demon hunter. So I guess there's lots of demon hunters around the world to tackle the paranormal and then Buffy is just the slayer which is a bigger bigger deal for some reason. Um, so maybe there won't be another slayer but I'm just thinking that would be an interesting plot line if somehow, some way. There was another Slayer introduced, and there was a bit of a rivalry. I don't know. A lot of educators tell students, think of your principal as your pal. I say, think of me as your judge, jury, and executioner. On the one hand, Buffy hasn't stabbed a horticulture teacher with a trowel. Sheila has never burnt down a school building. <laughs> well, that was never proven. The fire marshal said it could have been mice. Mice. Stabbings. Arson. Thursday is parent-teacher night. Your parents, assuming you have any, will meet your teachers. So but imagine if they didn't. Imagine if their parents were, like, dead. <laughs> That's so mean. I'm sorry to put the two of you in charge of this event. You have three days to prepare the refreshments, make the banners, and transform the school lounge into a habitable place for adults. Because you mess up this time, and your parents will be coming to clean out your lockers. He's just asking for them to get in trouble. Well, she was definitely intense. That guy with her, that's the guy she can bring home to mother. She was already smoking in fifth grade. Once I was lookout for her. You're bad to the bone. It's no biggie. You'll have a nice soiree. Parents will love it. As long as nothing really bad happens between now and then, you'll be fine. Oh, Are you crazy? Well. <laughs> what did you say that when something bad is going to happen? Maybe this time it'll be different. Why does he look so different to me this season? Oh my god. This is quite the entrance. Is this the new villain I wanted? <laughs> okay. Home sweet home. Is this a new villain? 
He got such a badass entrance. I feel like he's got to be a big deal with an entrance like that. And home sweet home. He's got history too. Maybe he probably knows Angel then. I bet they know each other. But anyways, um, oh my God, Principal Snyder. What principal would be like, okay, parent-teacher conferences are coming up and I'm going to get the two biggest troublemakers in school and make them put this event together. Like, you're just asking for failure. You're just encouraging failure at that point. Like, he just, he, Principal Snyder lives to see kids fail, and he loves it. The night of St. Vigius, our power shall be at its peak. It'll be the greatest event since the crucifixion, and I should know. I was there. <laughs> I knew. You were That's there. Funny. Oh, okay. Please. So, who do you kill for fun around here? <laughs> who are you? <laughs> Spike. Spike? Spike? Who do you kill for fun around here? Yeah, I did a couple of slayers in my time. I don't like to brag. Oh. <laughs> Drusilla. You shouldn't be walking around. You're weak. Look at all the people. This one has power. I could feel it from the outside. Do you like daisies? I plant them, but they always die. I'm cold. I'm a princess. <sighs> That's what you are. Me and Drew, we're moving in. So, how about this Slayer? <laughs> what is that? okay okay what was that little bonnie and clyde action drusella he called her drew she calls herself a princess is she a vampire she licked up his blood like what's up with her something's up with her he looks like standard vampire right he looks and acts like a standard vampire that we've always seen she could also be a vampire but why is she so weird <laughs> like what why is she like that like maybe at first when she came in and because she's like i can't feel her I, when she was talking about buffy she was like i can't feel her or see her or something I, I don't know she kind of like insinuated she had some sort of psychic ability of some kind so it's like oh is she a, a witch because we know that those exist, but we've not really gotten a character where I can do a deep dive into them as a witch and see how witches work in this universe. So I was kind of hoping she was a witch. But then she licked up his blood and I was like, oh, so is she a vampire? But then based on how they were interacting with each other, I could be like, she's just into that. <laughs> like, I don't even know for sure if she is a vampire. I don't know. I don't know. Spike is a fun one. I'm excited. To, I'm excited about Spike, but I'm I think I'm more interested in Drusella right now just because she intrigues me so much. And of course, like their relationship is very interesting. Have we seen vampires in relationships before? Because I thought in this show, the usual vampire didn't really care for that. I guess Angel, though, is a vampire and he clearly cares about Buffy. He, that's because he got his soul returned that's right because he got like some weird his some weird thing happened in his past where he got he had to like live with his emotions unlike other vampires because i think he got his soul i forget exactly what the mechanics were of angel's past and why he has like empathy and feelings still but regular vampires don't so now i'm very interested in spike because why does he andrew sell like why do they care about each other and have like this romantic loving relationship like how do they have that if he's a vampire i feel like they must have a lot a lot a lot of history between each other but even then i don't know these two are very interesting to me and i'm excited about them what can you really tell about a person from a test score so Whether true though she's ever going so out true. friends again oh that and i had to start a new business not to mention a new life in a whole new town what i don't want is to be disappointed in you again oh wow <laughs> well that's the last thing that i want too yeah. I have a lot of pressure on me right now. Wait till you get a job. 
I hate when parents say that. And like, it's just annoying in this moment because obviously we know how much stress and how much Buffy's dealing with and her mom doesn't know that. So she's just like, oh, wait till you get a job. Wait till you get into the real world. It sucks. Um, And I just hate when adults say that in general because I could go on a rant about it. Do I? Yes, adults probably face more stress in adult life. But they have the capacity to, whereas teenagers and their brains and their development, they don't have the capacity to deal with the type of stress that adults do, usually. Um, And hopefully, you know, some kids obviously have to grow up faster than others, and it's very sad. But um, teenage stress, like, that does feel like the worst in the moment for them because they don't know anything worse. Anyway, I think I'm, ex- I'm, I'm um, explaining it badly. It doesn't really matter in this situation, but it is frustrating, you know, that Joyce is like, <sighs> she also said, I, I don't want to be disappointed in you again, which I don't think she meant at all as any form of emotional <laughs> manipulation. I, she definitely did not have that intention, but it kind of like struck a chord with me because I'm like, oh, you're like trying to like guilt her into like, you better make this work. I don't want to be disappointed in you again. Like, you know, that's going to really, really affect her and nestle into her mind yeah it's just hard to see Buffy take all that um from her mom but her mom just doesn't realize what she's dealing with so it just kind of sucks well according to her calculations this Saturday is the night of St. Bridges let me guess he didn't make balloon animals <laughs> uh, he led a crusade well if I survive parent teacher night tomorrow I'll see what I can do about Saturday you a tad flip don't you think this is serious and getting kicked out of school is laughs aplenty. Please let me get through this week. Yeah. This Saturday is going to need a great deal of preparation. Well, we'll help. And I can research stuff. And while I'm whittling, I plan to whistle a jaunty tune. <laughs> your help will be greatly appreciated. But you know what? To Sometimes the way that he delivers his lines, and maybe it's like his the sense of humor that they give Xander in this show, he he gives me Chandler from Friends vibes. Like, that's what I feel like they're going for. No one can be Chandler from Friends. The way that he just delivered that line felt very Chandler from Friends. Also, oh my god. Like, poor Buffy. She's getting the talk down from her mom. She's getting the talk down from Giles. Buffy, I'm here to be the one to give you a break. You can do whatever you want and everything's gonna be fine. Just make sure everything is perfect on Thursday. Thanks for covering. Guy's a serious rodent. (laughs) I feel like you can't say that after um, Miss Rodent, Miss French, Miss French from the first season. Get it. Get it. <laughs> what is the dancing? Come on, one dance. You've been studying only 12 minutes. No wonder my brain's right. 12 minutes. Spike. Where's the phone? I need to call the police. There's some big guy out there trying to bite someone. <laughs> Slay. Slay. Yeah, I knew he was he was expecting this outcome, but why did he just did it make her do all that? Happens on Saturday. I kill you. <laughs> Clearly not. But I'm hoping also that she doesn't kill him on Saturday because I feel like he could be a really interesting villain. And I'm not ready to stop dissecting him and his girlfriend's little relationship. Just the feel of the leather makes me want to... Where'd she go? What's going on? Were they both vampires? Not funny! Who are you? Who do you want me to be? What's your name? He killed and ate them, like drained them that fast and that quietly? What? Well, he can't be any worse than any other creature you faced. He's worse. Angel? Once he starts something, he doesn't stop. Angel, do you know if this Spike fellow goes under any other name? What if they're like brothers? I feel like that would have been, didn't they? They looked up Angel in a book though, and it probably would have mentioned if he had family, but why did he not want to talk? What is this now? Ooh, this is the print. Dro- I knew it was her. Why is she like this? Darling, are you going to eat something? St. Bridges is coming up. Should be a party. You should go up with that plan. True. You see, Miss Edith, if you'd been good, you could watch with the rest. 
Okay. She is a vampire. Got it. It's just that the way she was acting, and that was weird. What was she? She was like, sometimes I'm afraid my hair is going to fall out. And he's like, no, don't worry about that. Eat something. It's like, it's like he has her under some sort of spell in some sort of hate. She just seems so hazy and like not completely there. And I wonder if he's done something to her to keep her at his side or if she's just weird and they're just like that and it's whatever i don't know but did she really just eat sheila because okay <laughs> so can i go now she doesn't need this many steaks i mean if this guy spike is as mean as you all said it should be over pretty quickly we're still all rooting for you on saturday i'd be there for you myself if i didn't have a leg wax <laughs> okay first of all we love the support cordelia thanks for that and second i just want to say like her freaking out about this having to be perfect is so funny because when she was like when buffy was like oh no the punch i'm gonna forget the punch i was like oh, girl it's okay if you forget one little thing or one little detail you know like you're not gonna get expelled over forgetting the punch but then i remembered who we're dealing with and Principal Snyder for sure would expel her for forgetting the punch. Uh, lemonade. I made it fresh and everything. How much sugar did you use? Sugar? Oh. <laughs> Is that your mother? Yeah. Oh! Oh, oh my sorry. God. Um, yeah, yeah, I was going to introduce you, but um, she doesn't speak a word of English. <laughs> God, this is not going to end well. Hi, I'm Joyce Summers. I'm Buffy's mother. Principal Snyder, I'm afraid we need to talk. My office is down here. Buffy doesn't even do anything that bad. Like, what has she actually done? She doesn't seem like a rebellious kid to me. And his nickname by torturing his victims with railroad spikes. Hmm. Spike has fought two slayers in the last century. And yeah. He's killed them both. Kind of cool. Like, that is... He does get bragging rights for that. Killing two slayers. Like, we've not met anyone who's killed a slayer, right? No, I, I think that, I think it's fine. I think he said good things. Good mic. Sir, we had a date for Saturday. What? <laughs> okay, I love when Willow takes a stand. You're too old to meet. <laughs> but not to kill. Who are those people? What do they want? I didn't get much of a look, but is there something wrong with their faces? I yes, PCP. <laughs> it's a gang on PCP. <laughs> nobody goes out, nobody comes in until I say so. Do you hear me? Who do you think you are? The Slayer. Slayer! Are you getting a word picture here? Oh god, oh god. <laughs> Buffy always comes in the, in the nick of time. Some Ones in the sea. Oh shoot, I thought they heard Willow and Cordelia. What I say goes, and I say this is not happening. Well, then <laughs> I guess the danger's over. <laughs> right. We're not waiting for them to open the doors. I'm getting out. Door solid. Use your head. <laughs> this spike is so funny. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Snyder. What about your brilliant plan of escape? You got a plan? Good plan. I think he's gone. Yeah, just stay there until Buffy is the one opening the door. Hey! Got the door! I'm almost there. What a weak vampire. Buffy could have that door busted open in one kick flat. Buffy, look, get out of here, okay? We'll be all right. Look, just hang on for one more minute until I tell you to open the door. Sheila. Where have you been? Oh no. Sorry, I'm late. No, There's she's some really weird guys outside. She's a vampire. Shh. This should be fun. Angeles! <laughs> Spike! Oh babe. Damn! Come up against this slayer yet? She's cute. Not too bright though. Gave the puppy dog a more tortured act. People still fall for that Anne Rice routine. What a world. <laughs> I knew you were lying. No, this is all an act. So Angel and Spike go back. 
Angel is about 40 years older than Spike and was sort of a mentor to him at some point. It must have been before the soul thing where he got like his empathy back. And now he's, I can, I, he, Angel's definitely putting on a show acting like he's a bad guy right now, but I can't tell if Xander's in on it. Yeah. You think you can fool me? <laughs> oh my you god. You were my sire, man. You were my Yoda. Things change. Not us. <laughs> I smell the blood of a nice, ripe girl. Do we really need weapons for this? I just like them. <laughs> they make me feel all manly. <laughs> Oh, I love the cut back and forth with Buffy and Angel. Willow? <gasps> you get the hell away from my daughter. Joyce! What? Women! <laughs> oh my god, they even gave us the little, like, the foreshadowing of her looking down the hallway. But I did not think, I was not expecting that still. I thought that Willow and Cordelia would have stepped out of the closet to do that over Joyce. Okay, Joyce. Oh, and she scared him off. Nobody lays a hand on my little girl. I got a body inside and I got another one on the south lawn. It looks like he was pulled right through the window. I told him not to go through that window. <laughs> yeah, what's the deal with you being Spike Sire? Yeah, sire. What's a sire. I wrote that down. I need to say something to the media people. You want the usual story? Gang related, PCP? What you have in mind, the <gasps> truth? Right. Snyder knows. And if you get me out of this, I swear. <laughs> Are I'll they never still in there? Anyone ever again. Unless they really deserve it. Ask for some aspirin. And can you please send some aspirin? <laughs> hey. Oh my god, that's amazing. I like that Cordelia. <laughs> Willow said that all there was left to do was pray, and Cordelia literally did it. I offer penance. Penance? You should lay down your life. If I had to do it all over again, <laughs> who am I kidding? I would do it exactly the same, only I'd do this. No! <laughs> no less ritual. And a little more fun around here. Let's see what's on TV. <laughs> what? What just happened? He just killed him. He just killed him? I didn't realize that that cage... Wait. Oh my god. There was sunlight. I didn't even realize. For some reason, I thought that was moonlight. I thought it was nighttime. No, that was sunlight. And he's dead. Just like that. Okay. <laughs> um, wow. I really thought that... I really thought that the... Since they brought the Anointed One back, I thought that he was going to continue on to be an even bigger player than he was in season one. But no. He's just dead now. And I'm not that mad about it. I feel like there was so much potential in that character and they could have explored it and made it something good. But I'm also not upset about the fact that we're just done with him because especially with this this uh, reoccurring villain replacing the anointed being Spike and Drusella, who are much more interesting to me. So I'm cool with this. I'm cool with this. Sheila... I wonder if we're going to see her again because she has been turned into a vampire and she got away um, in the school. So I wonder if she's going to be like a recurring vampire that we're going to be fighting against. I don't know. We might never see her again, but I, I could see it going both ways. Wow. This was such a good episode, actually. Now that I'm looking back at my... I mean, it was... I, I didn't think it was not good while I was watching it, but like l sitting in it for a bit now, like, and by a bit, I mean 
two minutes. <laughs> I'm just fathoming like how good and how much happened in this episode and how good it was. Oh, wow. One thing I want to say before I get into some of my notes here is I loved the structure of this episode. The Monster of the Week episodes tend to follow the same structure, which isn't bad at all in my opinion, but these this structure that they used in this episode is much more engaging to me. So in a lot of Buffy episodes so far, we set up any sort of like character conflict at the beginning of the episode, we set up any themes at the beginning of the episode, then we move into who is our villain of the week, who's our what's our problem, what's our main conflict of this episode. Um, and then we move into the research portion where they figure out how to bring down the monster, and then we move in in like the last... 15 minutes we get the fight scenes and we kill the monsters and we save the day and then we get a little bit of the fallout and wrap it up in the last couple of minutes and that's how it always goes but with this we didn't get those segments it didn't get fed to us in those segments where it was like here is the mystery do your research here's the monster kill the monster it, we didn't get that and that's really exciting because I was like really on edge for a lot of this episode because we met Spike fairly early on then we introduced Drusella which which is like a bonus character in my opinion. I was like, oh, okay, two new characters, even more interesting. We didn't get like a full let's figure them out type of thing. There were just little seeds planted about them throughout the episode. And there was this like building tension with them throughout the episode. And by the end of it, they're still with us. And that's why, you know, they built, they could take their time with the building tension because it wasn't going to come to a conclusion where they were dead at the end of the episode. And that type of character building and tension building, that's just something that I love lot. Yeah, I just really like how this episode was structured. Spike is a very interesting villain in my eyes. Um, obviously, one of the big things that makes him interesting is the connection that he has with Angel. I always love when we get kind of like char a character web going. Our character relationships in this show right now are very simple. We have our main three of the friend group, Giles, their parents, Cordelia, you know, it's all very simple. There's no like web of characters at this point, I would say. One thing that's really nice about Angel being so old is that I feel like he can be the first character to start this web of intricacies that can make future characters very interesting and more complicated for us. And this is just the start of it, I hope, where where this villain, Spike, has history with Angel. And I don't know what it is. We know that he, Angel was his sire, which I caught that when it was mentioned at first. And I was like, oh, I don't know if that's just like a supernatural slang term <laughs> in this world um, or if it genuinely means something. But then when Xander brought it up later and was like, hey, what does he mean, sire? What's a sire? Then I was like, oh, shoot, a sire really is something meaningful. And I'm very excited to figure out what it is. I wonder if their relationship was meant to end as a sire and whatever. I don't know. I just feel like this. there's so much history and there's so many different things that could happen in their backstory. And I'm just very, very curious to see where the show takes their backstory because it can be it could be really interesting and it can provide us great insight into who Angel used to be and help me understand who he is now even better um, because I, I don't have a good read on Angel still. Like all I really get from Angel right now is like broody vampire who's been through a lot, cares about Buffy. Um... <laughs> That's really all I have on Angel right now. So I am interested in, in seeing more of his backstory. And I really like that we're getting it at the same time as we're getting a new villain. I think that's a good, smart writing um, to be able to kind of kill two birds with one stone and make things more interesting and make relationships between characters messier. I think this is a great a step in the right direction, for sure, introducing this villain. I talked about it a little bit during the show, but Drusella is also interesting to me. I think right now I'm just going to say I think she's just a regular vampire, and I guess her and Spike are just in a relationship. I'm confused about that because I thought that vampires didn't care about, didn't have the capability to care about others emotionally. I imagine they indulge in the physical with other people and have those type of relations relations but as far as like being in a committed heart felt relationship I, I didn't think that was a thing and they certainly seem to be in something like that so interested to see more about what that's about I, I wrote down that apparently there's a ball a bar in this town called the fish tank 
<laughs> which I just thought that was funny. So I wrote it down. Um, doesn't sound like the kind of bar that you want to be in. It sounds smelly. This one was called The Weekend of St. V- Vigis or something like that, which, you know, didn't really matter much to these vampires since Spike came in and wrecked their plans. And then the other big reveal in this episode is that Snyder knows. Was that the, that didn't look like, that guy who was he was talking to at the end because the police came to the school to help with this PCP gang fight. Um, And I couldn't tell if he was talking to the sheriff or some sort of detective. It was something like that. And clearly he knew the truth of what was happening, but Snyder also knew, which is very curious. I don't know. What if he's like Loki? No. I was going to say, what if he's a demon hunter? That'd be a crazy twist. But I just, I think that would be a reach. That would be a reach because he decided to stay. (sighs) That's so interesting. It's making me like rethink all of the decisions he's made and the way that he's acting. I was going to say, I would assume that if he knows about the supernatural, he would know that Buffy is the slayer. And why would he be going so hard on her if he knew that? But maybe he doesn't. Maybe he knows of the supernatural. I'm trying to remember if Calendar... Calendar was aware of the supernatural world and she wasn't aware that Buffy was the Slayer. So that's possible that he just doesn't know her involvement. Although I feel like if he is smart and aware of the supernatural world and he saw what Buffy did in this episode, I think he might start to put two and two together there. I don't know. Yeah, now I got to keep an eye on Snyder. But yeah, I think I'm going to leave it there for episode three. Okay, episode four, Inca Mummy Girl. Inca Mummy Girl, just the title, is kind of like giving me Monster of the Week episode vibes because if we see a mummy in this episode, a mummy is definitely, it's Monster of the Week energy, right? I don't think we're going to have a recurring mummy villain, but even if our main villain of this episode is a mummy, I'm kind of hoping that we still also see some Spike and Drusella at the same time. A complete stranger in my house for two weeks. I'm going to be insane. A danger to myself and others within three days, I swear. I would have loved that. Have you ever done an exchange program? My dad tried to send me to some Armenians once. Does that count? <laughs> okay. So how's yours? Visually, I mean. I don't know. Guy like? By guy like, oh, we are guy? talking big, beefy, guy like girls, right? So, this person who's living with you for two weeks is a man with man parts. This is a terrible idea. <laughs> I don't think that was allowed when I was in school. Like, g- girls went with girls and guys went with guys for exchange programs. What are you. Oh. Willow, hi. That's probably not something you're Aww. supposed to be doing. Are we still on for our Kim tutorial tomorrow? Yeah. I think I got almost all 14 natural elements memorized. There are 103. <laughs> the human sacrifice is about to begin. Oh. She became a scary, discolored, shriveled mummy. The Incan people sacrificed their prince. Is that what mummies really look like? I've only seen cartoon mummies. Like toilet yeah, paper dots. They're wrapped in those nice white bandages, like in the movies. Mm hmm. That's what I'm saying. Rodney? Is that Rodney? Rodney, you're gonna die. Oh my god, you're so dead. Damn. You're so dead. <gasps> Ew. Oh. Did we just see the full sockets? Have you guys had mambas, by the way? I still, I have a huge, I think I showed you guys, I have a huge bag. What's your favorite flavor? Cherry, orange, lemon, raspberry, or strawberry? Because there's a correct answer. Slaying entails certain sacrifices, blah, blah, bitty, blah. I'm so stuffy, give me a scone. <laughs> It's as if you know me. <laughs> so I guess we're dance band. Cool, I think I get my mom's car, so I'm wheel man. Thought you were taking Willow. Well, yeah, I'm gonna take Willow, but I'm not gonna take Willow in the sense of take me. See, with you, we're three and everybody's safe. Buffy, I love Willow, and she's my best friend. What? Which makes her not the kind of girl who I think about her lips that much. She's the kind of girl that I'm best friends with. You know, I don't think I remember seeing Rodney on the bus back from the field trip. I didn't either. Hey, maybe he awakened the mummy. <laughs> right, and it rose from its tomb. <laughs> and attacked him. <laughs> it was right here, and it's broken. Does that mean the mummy's loose? No, comfy as ever. The museum workers just left it there? <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> okay, I just saved us, right? <laughs> Let's just get out of here before he comes back. But who is he? Also, 
Did they have orthodontists? Oh, oh my, what? Been dead for 500 years. Why does she have braces? Be? Who just whispered his name like that? Hello? Ah! Uh! Welcome to America. What if he left already? <gasps> Wait, I was gonna say maybe she's like she's kissing a bunch of random people <laughs> and is getting life from them, and they're like she's like killing them and and taking their life. Maybe she kissed someone with braces, so she got their braces. <laughs> That's the only thing I can think for the whole braces thing. Pada, here. That's the Incan mummy princess. <laughs> Xander, don't fall for it. Ay caramba. I can also say that. <laughs> he just becomes fluent in Spanish because he's so attracted to her. You're a girl. Yes, for many years now. Where'd the braces go? Exciting. What was that like? I did not see so much. Your English is mm. very bueno. I listened much. Well, that works out well because I talk much. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Honestly, I'm kind of on her side. Like, she was a mummy, and now she got taken back while well, she didn't kill people. All right, never mind. I want to fit in, Buffy. Just like you. Mm. A normal life. Then, momento, Nita. This whole student exchange thing has been a horrible nightmare. They don't even speak American. <laughs> so I'll see you later. Cordelia, man. You gotta admit, the girl is hot. Yeah, she's a hot girl. Let me guess, not your type? What does a girl have to do to impress you? Well, it involves a feather ball hey. and a feather summer place. I it's him. Discuss. I'm not picky. You're just impressed by any pretty girl that can walk and talk. She doesn't have to talk. <laughs> What's his name? That actor. He's in so much. He was in Scooby-Doo, wasn't he? He was in one of the Scooby-Doo's. I forget if it was the first or second. But he's in a whole bunch of random stuff. It is just more people than I have seen in a long time. Ah, don't worry. You will have no problems making friends. As a matter of fact, I know someone who's dying to meet you. She's insinuating that because before she was talking about how she has been to all these places, so she was aware that she was getting moved around from museum to museum, which means she's been, like, stuck inside her own body, blind and unable to move and just paralyzed for who knows how long. That's scary. I was, I was wondering if you could um, translate this. That was in no way awkward. <laughs> you should hide it. <laughs> is, is there anything you recognize here? I believe the word is bodyguard. He guards the mummy against those who would disturb her. A snack food. Snack food? Yeah, a it's a delicious cream. spongy golden cake stuffed with a delightful creamy white substance of goodness. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> now I cannot try it. That one has been too. <laughs> Such a dork. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think this matches? Willow. Hey. Her and Xander need to have the talk. Just, you have to have the talk. And then we can move on. I feel like she's not going to move, move on or be able to start the process of moving on from Xander unless they have the talk. The talk as in the type of talk that Buffy and Xander had because now Xander is still working on getting over her. He still obviously has lingering feelings, but he is working on moving on. And if it wasn't for that talk, that wouldn't have happened. And I just feel like it's time at this point for Willow and Xander, even though I do ship them. But they gave us that little uh, crumb of him looking at her differently at the very beginning of the first episode, you know, with the whole ice cream nose situation. They were literally about to kiss. So what was that about? I don't know. I can spend my life waiting for Xander to go out with every other girl in the world until he notices me, or I can just get on with my life. Good for you. Yeah. 
Well, I didn't choose yet. Oh. <laughs> Good lord. Ah! You stole the seal! Where oh. is it? <laughs> I thought he was attacking him because... <laughs> my first... Why was this my first thought? My first thought that was that the bodyguard was attacking Xander because he gave uh, mommy girl preservatives. <laughs> And that's unhealthy, so he's protecting her from the Twinkie. No, okay, stealing the seal. That makes more sense. You're right, Impana. And it's time we do. Do you guys see? There's like weird... At an archaeology club. The episode is like glitching at the bottom of my screen. Up and down, up and down. I'll just try to ignore it, but it's weird. Your investigation is dangerous. I do not want that just normal life. I'm trying to convince her that our lives aren't just danger and peril around here. You should take her to the dance. That's a good idea. We'll all go. No, I mean, just you. I have something to tell you. He's good. And it's kind of a secret, and it's, um... Xander! A little bit scary. You can't just go around I telling like people... Oh. A lot. Okay. I want you to go with me to the dance. Oh. Oh. I thought he was about to tell her about vampire slaying. Can I tell you a secret? I like you too. I like you too. Really? You're not a praying mantis, are you? <laughs> I, that was on my Sorry, mind too. Someone else. Oh, she's not. I will return to you. At least there's that. Where are you going? Do not kill me. You are already dead. For 500 years. The people you kill now, so that you may live. Mm. They are innocent. Mm. I am in love. <laughs> you are the chosen one. <laughs> You remind me of someone from very long ago, the Inca princess. They told her that she was the only one, that only she could defend her people from the netherworld. By sacrifice. Out of all the girls in her generation, she was offered as a sacrifice and went to her death. Who knows what she had to give up to fulfill her duty to others? What chance at love? Hmm, yeah. Who knows? I feel you, girl. But you can't kill people. <laughs> I wish there was a way for us to like help her. Some of these villains, like they have a reason, a valid reason to want these things. But I wish we could figure out how to help them without them having to kill people, obviously. Because I do feel bad for her. Two days in America and Ampata already seems like she belongs here. She's really fitting in. Yeah. Oh, Buffy. How about that? Oh, Buffy. You break my heart, or I should say my heart breaks for you. Hey! I almost wore the same thing. <laughs> you look great, Willow. You. Fruit drinky. He speaks perfect English, doesn't he? Like, that's a classic joke where you're like talking with some idiots, talking to someone like they can't be un understanding them. And then you find out later on that they understood you the whole time. Maybe I should have worn something sexy. No, Willow. Wear what you're comfortable in. Although that does look a little hot. Some, some intense layers and fur. I thought we were going to be at the museum to find the bodyguard. No, he's already been found. In a school restroom. Mummified. Mm -hmm. But it was his job to ensure that the mummy didn't awaken and escape. So I'm part of translated wrong. Oh. Perhaps. Oh, of course. How did I? Yeah. Why, uh, of course, the bodyguard for the seal, right? Why did I trust her translation? I, I thought, I knew she, I thought that she just wasn't giving them the full translation, but it makes even more sense that she would steer them in the wrong direction like that. What kind of girl travels with a mummified corpse? Um. Oh, Xander. Poor, poor Xander. And poor, poor Willow. I want Willow to get a boyfriend or love interest. She's so good. She wants that connection, I can tell. But maybe she's not ready to have it with anyone but Xander because she's so hung up on him. But I wish we could see her happy with someone because she's just always got cartoon eyes for Xander. That girl. Where is she? She's an exchange student. I think she's from South America. <laughs> no, not her. Willow? The Eskimo. No way! Oh my god, please stick around. Please be with Willow. Oh my god, she deserves to be looked at like that. Wait, can she kiss? Yeah, won't that kill him? I didn't even think about that. Momento, punchy fruity drink. Is Cordelia even from this country? <laughs> I knew it. Here. 
hands feel kinda uh. rough. So she needs to keep kissing people to keep her life sustained? There you are. I do not deserve you. You think that you don't deserve me? <laughs> Man, I love you. <laughs> mm. Yeah. 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 No, I can't. He's looking for Ampada. We need to find him. Ampada's the mummy. Oh. Good. <laughs> No, no, no. Who is that girl? No. Please, please, please don't leave me hanging with that. Oh my god, she got there fast. It's one more piece. <sighs> I'll say one thing for you, Ink and Mummies. You know, kiss and tell. <laughs> Was she strong enough to get? This won't hurt. Sand, we can be together. <laughs> just, just let me have this one. You want life? You're gonna have to take mine. Can you do that? I feel like she can. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I knew Buffy would be strong enough to get out of there. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Whoa. a praying mantis and a mummy. What's gonna be next for him? Because I know that's not the last time he he has a thing for one of these monsters. No words even necessary. <laughs> I love that they have nothing to say. They're just like, all right, let's go. <laughs> Present company excluded. I have the worst taste in women of anyone <laughs> in the world. I do think she cared about you. Yeah, but I yeah. think that whole sucking the life out of people thing would have been a strain on the relationship. I think so. She was just a girl and she had her life taken away from her. Can you relate it all, Buffy? I remember how I felt when I heard the prophecy that I was going to die. You gave up your life. I had you to bring me back. Hmm. Oh, it's a very sudden ending, but okay. This one was fine. I mean, followed up, trying to follow up episode th three, hard to do. But this one was fine. Uh, Rodney. Oh, what was his name? What was the guy's name played by that guy? <laughs> you know who I'm talking about? Oz. Oz. Who plays Oz? Seth Green is his name. Okay. Oz better be a reoccurring character and Oz better ask Willow out and Willow better like him and they better be happy together because I need to see Willow happy. I feel like having someone else and opening her heart to somebody else and allowing that to happen is going to be a great step in her finally getting off the Xander train. Not to say that they might not come back together ever in, later on, but I just feel like right now it's not their time, if it will ever be. Um, so I definitely, and just the way Oz was looking at her and trying to talk to her and it was just so cute. And I so want that to be a thing. I need some romance. I need some wholesome romance in this show. It was nice that we got a cool backstory again for this monster, um, but it kind of gave the energy right away. You know that this is only going to be lasting for an episode. So, you know, you knew eventually they're going to find out that the girl is the mummy and they're going to kill her and that was going to be the end. But I mean, it was an interesting backstory, mostly because of the way that Buffy could relate to it. Um, I feel like the highlight of this episode, other than hopefully maybe planting a romantic seed for Willow with Oz, the other main highlight of this episode is just digging deeper into Buffy's feelings about fitting in and feelings about wishing she could be a normal girl, relating to the mummy who had her life taken away from her. Buffy, in a sense, also had her life as in her normal life taken away from her. Watching Buffy see Impata and Xander leave for the dance while she had to stay behind because she had to work with Giles on Slayer stuff, like, it always tugs at my heartstrings, like, the constant reminder that she is obligated to this, like, this isn't something she chose, this is just who she has to be, and it just sucks in moments like that where these these quintessential teenage things are happening and she doesn't get to participate. I don't know, I feel like it just hits me every time, and 
I like that they tied the backstory of this Monster of the Week episode villain into Buffy's psyche because I think it makes it a more interesting watch because of how connected we are with Buffy. Also, as far as character development in this episode, it was really sad to hear Willow um, kind of voice some insecurity when she saw Empata come to the dance and what she was wearing. She was like, oh, I should have dressed sexy. And like I said, I'm really hoping that Oz swoops her off her feet here and sticks with us because I don't want her to feel like she has to change. I, I And her overhearing that Xander doesn't think of her that way and then seeing like Xander like these girls who like dress different than she does. And I just don't want to see her change herself for him or anyone. I mean, clearly Oz likes her for her. He saw her for the first time when she was wearing that costume that she had on which was clearly being foot poked fun at in the episode based on what the other girls were wearing showing more skin and he didn't care like he just really could only see her face and that was enough for him i'm really hoping that this oz and willow thing takes off and he i i, I don't know if they'll be i don't think they'll be endgame because seth green is is a bigger actor and i feel like i would know if he had a longer role in this show other than maybe some season two episodes but if anything I hope if he does stick around that it'll be long enough to instill some confidence into Willow that she doesn't have to change for someone to like her yeah poor Xander I mean it's not his fault that he fell for a praying mantis and a mummy you know it's on the villains it's not on him but it's unfortunate we didn't see Calendar in this episode we didn't really see Snyder we didn't see our new uh, characters Spike and Drusella, but that's okay. I'm sure we we will get to see all of them again. We also didn't get much Cordelia, actually, other than the fact that she is dating, was his name Devin? I think it might have been something, it might have been Devin. He was the singer in the band and Oz was the guitarist. So I guess Cordelia is with Devin. Now I try to keep kind of tabs on these little relationships that they show us between characters, but Cordelia... And Devin, I don't think, are very serious. Clearly, he doesn't care about her because he's just like, yeah, Cordelia is hot, right? Um, so there's like not a real connection from his end. And I don't think there is on her end either. I'm not sure if she wants there to be, though. Um, but I don't think there is. She was just more concerned about having him as a date to the dance. So I think that was just more about image than feelings. Which, now that I'm just thinking about like thinking about that more, I really want to see Cordelia in a relationship, a meaningful relationship. I want to see how she, what she would be like in one because right now I feel like she doesn't really treat people kindly and I want to see someone soften her up a bit. I'm sure we will eventually, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, obviously, out of these two episodes that we watched tonight, School Hard was my favorite. This is what's going to be interesting in watching two at a time is my brain is just going to naturally compare the two and I don't want to go too hard into that type of mindset and start comparing episodes in that way just because I'm watching them right next to each other. But School Hard was just such a standout and one thing I actually didn't mention when we watched School Hard was also um, at the end. I, I obviously, I think I said something in the moment, but I didn't mention at the end with my little spiel that how proud I am of Joyce for like stepping up and showing like a little bit of badassery. I don't know. I think her mom instincts just kicked in and she she went after Spike. Like Spike is the real deal. Like he's killed two slayers and he got scared away from Joyce, which I thought was a little convenient because obviously it's hard to bring a fight to an end when the writers know they don't want Spike to be killed. Um, and so it's like, okay, how do we end the fight and let him get away? And I was kind of like confused when when Joyce, I was very happy when Joyce stepped in and she got in and, and she knocked him out. When he ran away, I was just like, oh, okay. Is he just scared of moms? I don't know. <laughs> but either way, very proud of Joyce for that, that moment. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.